get you caught up on what happened with or what's happening with the 76 f250 here so we pulled her in the barn as you can see i got her fired up and drove it in here under the hoist i pulled the intake off as you saw in my last video um i pulled the intake off with the hoist and then i pulled the engine out of it and now it's sitting here obviously the truck motor mounts don't line up with the car holes we made in the past so we're gonna have to slightly modify the run stand probably uh, for that to work but it's good enough for now i ordered a gasket set for it and a timing chain so i'm gonna take it all apart knock the heads off and just make sure to how many burn valves or anything like that uh, relap the valves in ignore the entire rotating assembly probably and put it back together with new gaskets fresh paint job and uh, a new manifold on this side because the exhaust manifold is very cracked i have one so might as well throw it on there just go through clean it up and do the mo minimal amount of work to get this thing uh, back in running order it ran before but it could run a lot better and it could leak a lot less as is apparent so that's what's going on there i also have a new fuel pump for it because that thing leaks like a sieve what about the rest of the truck so Again, the transmission worked also, but I want to go ahead and drop the pan on that and change the fluid out as well as put a new pan gasket on it. It needs front wheel bearings, so we'll have to do that as well. And the uh, master here probably needs change, but uh, it does hold fluid in the front, just not the back there of the reservoir. I don't know which is which. I assume it's been a while since I messed with brake stuff. Also, there's also a reseal kit to take apart the steering thing of about right down there so I'm probably gonna take that apart also and also want to go through all the lines and make sure everything looks good there I also spotted some 35 inch tires on marketplace uh, but they are have a set but they're 17 by 35 so I'll have to find some new rims is the only bad thing but I think this truck would look killer on some 35s it already has 33s and if I had four of these Bigfoots we would run them, but I don't have four. I only have three. Because that looks like a pretty killer wheel and tire setup. It's just not. Um, I don't have a full set. So is what it is there. Set number one is to get the motor running good, obviously. So that's what we're going to focus most of our effort on here. So let's go ahead and I guess we'll start tearing her down. So I'll go ahead and take you guys step by step on what it takes. Take apart an FE. They're really simple. There's a few things you need to keep in mind whenever you're doing stuff like this. But... Hopefully uh, this video will, hopefully I can guide you through steps to taking one of these things apart and checking it out. I'm not, I don't plan on knocking apart the rotating assembly. I might take a rod cap off or something, but probably not. If it doesn't wobble around, it doesn't shake. It never rod knocked before, so I don't think there is any problem with the rotating assembly. But we'll definitely take the oil pan out, off and check it out just to make sure. Because we don't want this thing to blow up as soon as we get it put back together. So I want this to be a pretty reliable truck, obviously. And I think a 360 is a good option for that. This truck has 117,000 miles on it anyway, so it obviously was good enough for 117,000. I do believe this 360 has been rebuilt before. Obviously, it has silicone uh, on the china wall instead of the court gasket, and it's also not Ford blue. I think it's like New Holland blue or like tractor Ford blue. I don't know. It's not like the right blue, so definitely has been rebuilt before. Uh, like I said, if I take the in taking the intake off, you got to take the rocker shafts off before you can take the intake off, as well as pull out your push rods. So I guess you guys missed that step. Uh, I should have showed that a little better, but it's pretty simple. There's 10 intake bolts that hold the intake on. As well, yeah, these are Felpro gaskets too, so I don't think <laughs> those are not original. But uh, so there's 10 intake bolts, and the intake can come off, and you can see the ginormous mess here. At these also have this oil tray here to reduce the amount of windage in the lifter valley. This is a very important piece. Make sure you put it back on. That's the only part you guys really missed was taking the intake and the rocker shafts off and then the push rods out. So next I'm gonna try and get the exhaust manifolds out. Uh, this one already came out, that's nice. This one's already loose. I just couldn't get to these two whenever it was in the truck. Uh, in order to get the exhaust off the manifolds, I actually had to make this little access panel. I took the grinder and just cut a slit. And then I got access right to the exhaust manifold. So that was really handy. Uh, thank you, Ford, for making this inner fender so easy to cut. Overall, the truck's in pretty decent shape. It obviously has some rust. Behind this fender is one of the bad spots. <clears throat> Behind the door trim there is bad. This cab corner is gone. 
and above the wheel arch as well. But overall, it's a pretty solid truck and I really like it. It's really cool. The tailgate is blue and not original. I have the yellow tailgate for it, but I think I'm gonna keep this one on there for now just because it, you know, is on there already. Needs new taillight lenses and housings. They both are shattered and broken. That side marker is good still, but praise the Lord. That is really ugly. It needs to be white, I think. <laughs> I don't know why it's rusty like that. The trim needs another screw shot in it, obviously. Uh, it has a bunch of other screws already shot in it, but, you know, whatever. Gas tank also... Whoa. <laughs> that scared me. I did not expect it to have pressure on it. Jeez Louise. The gas tank was left open without a lid on it for many, many moons. So I don't know how bad it is in there. I did buy a new cap for it a couple months ago, which I put on there, but uh, the gas tank is going to have to come out. And to get the gas tank out, I take the seat out. And to get the seat out, <clears throat> I got to get this rounded bolt out, which is not going to be fun, but we'll figure it out. Probably a sawzall is going to be the answer to that question. Uh, door card needs a couple screws. All the window seals and door seals are completely shot. Thankfully, they're all pretty cheap, so I'm not too worried about that. I already got new grills for it, obviously. Looks pretty awesome. The hood needs a little bit of work. I'm hoping we get to uh, cut the corner out of it and make it not dented in, so we'll work on that too. I hope the booster is good. We're going to try and get this truck going as cheaply as possible that is the goal i'll stop yapping and we'll get to work i'll get a tripod set up and we can take this 360 apart and see what we got to work with here so i just used the impact and knocked the flex plate off the back of it here the ring gear and something of interest um became apparent to me so on these flex plates they need to have that washer thing i don't know what it's for but it needs to be there i know so it wasn't on this one wonder if that has anything to do with why it failed but as you can see hopefully the teeth just are not uh not very good on this one they're not excellent on that one either but they also did work very well on the 390 before so i can only assume that it'll be fine at least that's my hope next we're going to go ahead and knock those manifolds off I swear, I don't know how many times I've done this. I must have a thing for FEs or something. Yeah, we got Luke back there in the back working on his bug. <laughs> Changing the distributor on it. Putting a Petronics in it. So, I'm going to go ahead and tear down this 360. And uh, I'll let you guys know if anything exciting happens. Alright, I'm going to take off these manifolds first. Since we're going to go worse here. That one's already taken out. That's conveniently convenient. Make sure you use your biggest breaker bar to get these bolts out because you're going to need it. Also make sure your engine stand is nice and tight, that way it doesn't like fall on your face. I'm honestly impressed this came out. Uh, I'm probably going to have to redrill some of these probably, more than likely. Oh my gosh, it broke free? That's wild. I swear I'm not making this up, these are all breaking free right now. Okay, well those are all loose on that side. I only got a couple more on this side. That one's loose. Can't get a socket on that one. That one's loose. What? How many pieces is this manifold going to come off in? I can see three distinctive cracks, so write it in the comments. How many pieces do you think it's going to take? I'm going to grab that nice one. Either or. Huh? Either or. I think there's one out here. What uh, drive do you want? This one's a quarter inch drive. Is that okay? Yeah. I have the rapid disassembly device here. We're just going to rapidly disassemble this. Yep. Mm -hmm. I did hose these down on TV, TV Blaster a while back, so that could help. But still mind one. Hey, anybody need a 009 Volkswagen distributor? Uh, 30 bucks, seriously. 
Does anyone think it's going to be a standard board or is it going to be rebuilt before? Oh, shoot. No, no. The manifold broke in half. I'm also thrilled I don't have to, I don't have to re uh, tap any of these holes. I'll run a chaser there and clean them out, but I'm thrilled about that. All right. Manifolds are off. All right, as I was saying, we're taking the heads off. And then we're going to. We're going to reuse the head bolts because that's what you do, you know, it's what you do, you reuse them. All right, just got the head off here, this side, there's like, well, there's really no ring ridge on the top, which is insane. So I guess it hasn't had that many miles on the rebuild, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, there's like no ring ridge, which it's wild. Uh, this is probably a 360, I haven't measured the stroke yet, but just judging by, look how low below the deck that piston is. Not exactly very high compression. Let me get a wire brush in these pistons, see if I can see if it's been 30 over or something. It almost would have to be without this. I know it's got 117,000 on the truck, so, and no ring ridge has got to have been re rebuilt before. So let's uh, get a wire brush on that. It's really hard to see, but I think this thing's been punched 40 over. It's uh. Yeah, it measures like a 409 bore, which is 40 over, so. One very concerning thing, it even though it doesn't have a ring ridge, you know, it doesn't have a ring ridge, look how much these pistons move in the bore. This one was especially bad. Do we ignore it? And we just put it back together like nothing happened? Or do we fix it? It obviously has quite a bit of taper, but check that out. You can hear it. So yeah, not, not an awesome. Let's get the stroke now. It's about 105 thousandths in the hole, so that's pretty wild. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get the stroke. What I'm going to do, I know a 360 stroke should be 3.5. So if we set this thing to 3.39 or something like that. I said that wrong. It should be like 3 point, a little over 3.61. That's what it should be, the stroke be with that far in the hole from the deck. So if we go ahead and take our trusty calipers here. All right, that's pretty close. Where are we at? Hmm, 3.9. That's not right. Let me do some more measurement on this thing. I can't really believe what I'm seeing here, so <clears throat> I had to revert to the tape measure. I measured it with the calipers, and all the way in the hole uh, is right about 3.95, which let me just measure that one more time just to make sure I'm not seeing things. Watch for that piston to be all the way down in the hole. It's like right around there. Take our calipers here, rest it on the deck of the block, make sure it's clean. 3.885. I measured it's 110 thou from the top of the deck. Shoot. <clears throat> 3.775 is what I measured at, 3.775. A 390 stroke is 3.78. Let me use a tape measure. It should be closer to three and three quarter inches, not three and a half, because a 352, 360 stroke should be three and a half inches. I seriously don't believe it. That's insane. I, I don't believe it. I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I'll take the oil pan off and check the crank for markings, I guess, now. Son of a gun. I think this thing might be a 390. Just knock the timing chain cover off here. Probably need to get a new harmonic balancer. I'll probably just get whatever the stock replacement is. It's not terrible, but it is kind of getting to be dry rotted and I just don't want that, want that. So we'll just probably get a new stock replacement one for that. And then, uh, oh my gosh. I think it was time for a, a, a new one. Yep. Actually wild. I don't think I've 
that's just that's a lot of slop <laughs> a lot of slop so anyway there's that i guess i'm gonna knock the oil pan off next and we'll see the cranks well guys <laughs> i don't know what to tell you i just took the pan off here there's a 2u stamped on the crank and those of you fe guys who know that's a 390 crank and my camera is really dirty better anyway there's the 2u in all her glory uh the rest of the threading assembly isn't the greatest i won't lie to you i feel like that's probably a little too much play there i don't know you know do we send it or not send it that's the question so yeah this is a 390 this is a 390 crank we could probably build this uh pretty cool we could i mean it's you know it's not a 360 so it's definitely worth more than i thought it was i don't know i'm gonna knock the motor mounts motor mounts off and hose her down with some degreaser and uh just think about it i guess i don't know this makes this truck a little bit cooler 390 powered 76 f250 so uh yep uh the timing chain cover has been broke and repaired before <laughs> so i have a new one new one you know off 352 so it's it's probably gonna go on here so this thing has d2 te heads on it so they're you know truck heads still but the block is a c6 mea which is i wish i always thought was very interesting or sorry a c7 mea so just very very interesting Well guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end it right here. Uh, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. We tore this motor down, we've seen, mostly, it's a lower hitting assembly, still a short block. But we've seen that it's a uh, 390. So now we need to come up with a plan, what to do, you know? It's a 40 over 390, so. Anyway guys, I'll uh, see you back in another video when we have a plan on what to do with this motor and how uh, to go about building it, essentially. Thanks for watching. See you next time on It'll Run. All right, I had to, had to show you guys one more thing. I didn't think it could get any more interesting than this. So there's a stud here. I'm not entirely sure if that's correct. My other truck block over there has this tap right here for the support for the, uh, I'll show you guys, for the support for the oil pickup too. thing. See, that's tapped instead of having a stud there. So I don't know if that was something they changed, if this is actually, you know, I don't know. I don't know for sure. This has holes for car motor mounts. And this isn't a plug. This is a bolt with electrical tape on it shoved in the dipstick hole. So was this a car 390? Not a truck 390? Had to let you guys know that. Let me know what you think in the comment section below.